Lesson 2 for October 5 to 11, Nehemiah, read by Dr. Percy Harold. Sabbath afternoon, October 12. Before we start, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come to open some fascinating books again this week, and as we do so, we pray that the history that we learn, the vision that we see in your word, will help us in our daily lives and with those around us. But also, help us with our faith in you, that we may know that in the past you were so faithful and that you were still faithful today. Bless us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our memory text this week is Nehemiah chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. So it was, when I heard these words, that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven, and I said, I pray, Lord God of heaven, O great and awesome God, you who keep your covenant and mercy with those who love you and observe your commandments. Nehemiah 1, verses 4 and 5. Let's read that again. So it was, when I heard these words, that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven, and I said, I pray, Lord God of heaven, O great and awesome God, you who keep your covenant and mercy with those who love you and observe your commandments. To date, two groups of captives have returned to Judah in at least partial fulfilment of God's promises to the Hebrew nation. But there is one more company of exiles that God is preparing The last group of captives is commissioned to fix a problem. Although the first two groups return to rebuild Jerusalem and to complete part of that project by finishing the temple, the rest of the construction was abandoned as opposition from the surrounding nations arose. The people from the surrounding area didn't want the Israelites to build the city and its walls because they were afraid that the Israelites might become a mighty nation as they had once been, which we read about in Ezra chapter 4 and verses 6 to 24. That reads, In the reign of Asuherus, in the beginning of his reign, they wrote an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. In the days of Artaxerxes, also Bishlam, Mithridath, Tabal, and the rest of their companions wrote to Artaxerxes, king of Persia, and the letter was written in Aramaic script and translated into the Aramaic language. Rehem, the commander, and Shimshai, the scribe, wrote a letter against Jerusalem to King Artaxerxes in this fashion. From Rehum the commander, Shimshai the scribe, and the rest of their companions, representatives of the Deniats, the Aphasathites, the Tarpalites, the people of Persia and Erek and Babylon and Shushan, the Dehavites, the Elamites, and the rest of the nation whom the great and noble Osnapa took captive and settled in the cities of Samaria and the remaining beyond the river and so forth, This is a copy of the letter that they sent him. To King Artaxerxes, from your servants, the men of the region beyond the river, and so forth. Let it be known to the king that the Jews who came up from you have come to us at Jerusalem and are building the rebellious and evil city and are finishing its walls and repairing the foundations. Let it now be known to the king that if this city is built and the walls completed, they will not pay tax, tribute or custom, and the king's treasury will be diminished. Now, because we receive support from the palace, it was not proper for us to see the king's dishonour. Therefore, we have sent and informed the king that search may be made in the book of the records of your fathers. And you will find in the book of the records and know that this city is a rebellious city, harmful to kings and provinces, and that they have incited sedition within the city in former times, for which cause this city was destroyed. We inform the king that if this city is rebuilt and its walls are completed, the result will be that you will have no dominion beyond the river. The king sent an answer. To Rehum the commander, to Shimshai the scribe, to the rest of their companions who dwell in Samaria, and to the remainder beyond the river, peace, and so forth. The letter which you sent to us has been clearly read before me, 
And I gave the command, and a search has been made, and it was found that this city in former times has revolted against kings, and rebellion and sedition have been fostered in it. There have also been mighty kings over Jerusalem, who have ruled over all the region beyond the river, and tax, tribute, and custom were paid to them. Now give the command to make these men cease, that this city may not be built until the command is given by me. Take heed now that you do not fail to do this. Why should damage increase to the hurt of the kings? Now, when the copy of King Artaxerxes' letter was read before Rehum, Shimshai the scribe and their companions, they went up in haste to Jerusalem against the Jews and by force of arms made them cease. Thus the work of the house of God, which is at Jerusalem, ceased. And it was discontinued until the second year of the reign of Darius, king of Persia. Thus the return of the Israelites appeared to be a threat. One, that they were determined to stop. But God didn't call his people in order to abandon them in the process of doing what he had called them to do. Thus, he was preparing another man to carry out his will and to accomplish his purposes. His name was Nehemiah, and to him and his work for the Lord we turn. This week's lesson has been read by Dr. Percy Harold from Queensland, Australia. It is brought to you by Hope Channel, the Sabbath School Department, and through the services of Christian Services for the Blind. A video of this podcast also occurs on YouTube. Remember, God is always faithful.